Welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast. It's your boy Blue Wessel here with the one and only Robbie V. Today we talk a whole lot of games, whole lot of games. We talk about state of play. We talk about Power World. Uh, we talk a lot about Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad. Rob's experience. Does Rob like the game, or does yeah. Rob hate the game? Or I'll give is you Rob my realistic expectations, or my real Very review, realistic. I should say. Uh, it's a whole lot of games. We talk a whole lot about state of play, a lot of things that came out, um, a lot of things we're looking forward to. And honestly, this is a pretty straightforward podcast. We just talk a lot about the games we're excited for, talk a lot about how we feel about uh, games like Power World and uh, Suicide Squad. And once we're done talking a whole lot about games and our thoughts on the current ecosystem, we go into Q&A. And that's pretty much it. It's a podcast. We talk about games. Probably the least derailed we've gotten on a podcast. Uh, ever. Yeah, we very, just, very on track we just, today. We just, we just, we just talk about a lot of games today. So if you just like us talking about games and not getting crazy derailed on other shit, uh, this stick is around. Factors delicious, ready to eat meals make eating every day better. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitianary approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie plus, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help you make your weekly meals and planning even more fun and delicious. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and feel good every week with meals ready to go. Two minute meals. That's my favorite part about this. Factor meals only take two minutes. They're quick and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash GG50 and use code GG50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active. That's code GG50 at factormeals.com slash GG50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. Right now, Mint Mobile has wireless plans just starting at 15 bucks a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for 15 bucks a month. I could be saving over $100 by switching to Mint Mobile with the plans that they showed me. All plans come with unlimited talk and text. High-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Choose from 3, 6, or 12-month plans and say goodbye to your monthly phone bill. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gg. That's mintmobile.com slash gg. So cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gg. Additional taxes, fees, restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Ever try to break a bad habit and felt like you're climbing Mount Everest in flip-flops? Yeah, I've been there too. But here's a breath of fresh air. Fume. It's not about giving up. It's about switching it all up. Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Months now, And whenever I get that urge, I just grab my fume, put in the orange uh, flavor, and puff away. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. Again, for me, it's all about the flavor. The orange flavor is by far the best. Start the year off right with a good habit by going to tryfume.com slash GG and get the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners to our show 10% off. They use our code at GG to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Again, that's tryfumefum.com slash gg. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast, episode 215? 215, 215, yes, all right. Hell yeah. Uh, big shouts out to all the Patreon supporters, uh, especially uh, our GG Over Easy legends, uh, if I'm able to pull them up here. Why isn't my... There we go. Uh, big shouts out to Halcyonix, Fields, Green Pea, and Hoth. Uh, so we hey, have the... Those well, guys are pretty cool. They are very cool. Uh, and you can tell by that, but their VIP badge is in my chat. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need to do that as well. Uh, speaking of my chat, um, I um, made my chat watch me play... See, and I say made because... 
it it was fun to play, but man, was it very repetitive. And I'm talking about the new game that just came out that I bought for a hundred dollars, um, called Suicide Squad. Oh no! Um, oh now, no! Now it was a hundred dollars because I guess you get some costumes. But you also get three days early access. And Dado asked if we wanted to help him with the sponsored stream. I have a rule in my life, and it says if Mr. Fruit or Dado ask me to do something, I do it. Um, so we played a Suicide Squad. And uh, you play as uh, four characters, Deadshot, uh, King Shark, Boomerang, and Harley Quinn. Um and you get to pick like one of the characters to play with like the whole game basically. Um Albus, why are you knocking over things? Um anyways, we get to start and playing the game and immediately I can tell well first of all the movement for Captain Boomerang ton of fun. A lot of fun. Uh it's great. It was it was different. It was really cool. You throw the boomerang, you teleport to the boomerang. Um I just don't know who asked this game to be like a live service looter shooter type of game. Uh, it was really weird. You finish a mission and then as you uh, finish said mission, uh, you get drops uh, that come from like a bat pod or something. And oh, in there, in there, it has a game or it has a gun or a shield mod or a secondary type of gun. Uh, that's basically either green, blue, purple, or legendary. Shocking, I know. Um, uh, and the game, you know, you know what, like when Destiny One, what Destiny One struggled with in terms of like its like missions, it's like every mission turned out to be like, hey, follow this thing. Okay, your ghost needs to do something. Protect the ghost while a bunch of waves come at you. Oh, don't or, tell me this is it. Don't tell me this hasn't learned. Or, you know, yeah. Um, so basically this game, you just, oh, so you do that or it's, Hey, you need to go to this location, but it's over swarmed by a bunch of enemies, destroy the enemies. And then you can move along the story. So it, it just happened to be like, uh, it, like run to said thing protect said thing from wave or destroy a wave from uh that's like on your mission thing and it it, it kept me entertained because like i said captain boomerang's kit is so fun um but it wasn't until like about three or four hours in it was like man i'm doing the same thing i've done since the beginning of the game like it's not any different like you run to said location and then like you fight these aliens that might as well be every alien you've ever played in every like i don't know superhero type or killing deus ex machina type like i don't know it's like aliens with like rocks on them but they have like orange kind of things for the ones that shoot but the red ones are like snipers but the, the, the ones... video game industry aliens like they the aliens they love making like yeah not, like you've like seen these everywhere but a little bit of shit on them to make them not quite as human yeah i just like don't understand like the thought process there and then like okay so like i'm gonna i'm gonna like spoil the game okay so like I can save you $100 or $60, okay? Already off the bat, don't buy this game. Um, if Especially, because like I didn't know this. Going into the game, I didn't know these are like in the same universe as like the Arkham games. Like Arkham City, Arkham Asylum, Arkham Knight, I think was the last one. I, I think it goes Asylum, City, then Arkham Knight. I could be wrong. Um... So I was shocked to hear that, like, it takes place in the same universe. Because, like, then you think, like, okay, so we're fighting the Batman that we play as in the Night series, which is sick and awesome. Um, But, like, it just misses the mark in all the little story plots. I mean, I didn't get more than four hours in, but I did watch Shadow's stream last night, and he beat it. Um, So you, you fight Brainiac. Brainiac has apparently... 
who is also one of the most mid villains in in DC. So the fact that Brainiac is able to, uh, you know, get into the minds of the superheroes is different. Uh, but they also just don't do the superheroes any justice. You know what I mean? Like, no pun intended. Um, Because, like, you think it's going to be a really cool thing. You know, like, wow, I'm going to be fighting the Flash. I'm going to be fighting Superman. Um, I'm going to be fighting, like, the Green Lantern. Um, And all of it just seems like to really miss the mark. Like, none of it really feels like it matters. None of it feels like... Almost like Injustice, like back in the day uh, when that fighting game came out. Like the story behind that game was really cool. The cutscenes were awesome, really interesting. Like I played the game for like more so like kind of the story behind like what's going on in the DC world in that uh, like in that fighting game. Um, but this one you just couldn't give a less of a shit about. Um, uh, you know, Captain uh, No uh, Wonder Woman's in it, and she's like the only one that like can't be like mind flared or something because like she has like some sort of like Amazonian thing that can help her not be mind read uh, or like brain controlled. Uh, so you basically go through the game, uh, killing the justice league, but like, it just really like anticlimactic like ways. Like I was watching Dado play it and it literally looks like he's doing what we did at the beginning of the game, just fighting a bunch of waves and killing enemies. But now like, Brainiac just happens to be around there. Uh, and the way the game ends is really weird, and they can totally see why they tried to pivot this game to live service. Uh, so spoilers if you don't want to hear how the Suicide Squad ends. Uh, but basically, you defeat Brainiac, okay? And uh, one of, I think it's like an alternate universe of Lex Luthor or something basically tells you like, hey, there's 12 other multiverses of this Brainiac that you guys still need to defeat because like it's not really defeated until you beat those other versions of him. So basically what that means is we're going to update the game eventually and let you kill this Brainiac of this universe and then we'll let you kill this Brainiac of this universe. And I just don't get why. I, I think, mark my words, I think you'll see this be the end of trip a lot of triple A live service type games. Uh, this game misses the mark in so many ways. It does. It it it, it unfortunately. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It diminishes uh, the Arkham previous Arkham games and all the stories you did in that. It's like one of those games, like almost like The Last of Us 2, like everything you did in the first game really doesn't end up mattering because of what happens in the second game. So it just kind of cheapens the Arkham's uh, series a little bit. Um, and again, it just falls into that cliche that I think you see in a lot of games where it's like they don't know what to do for a unique mission or something that's different every mission. But instead, like, let's just throw waves at them and they just spawn out of nowhere. Uh and let's try and have this cool combo system to where it feels like they try and keep their combo up and not really realize uh, what we're feeding them is the exact same thing over and over and over again. Uh, so uh, my quick review on Suicide Squad, save yourself 60 bucks. Maybe it goes on sale in, in, in the Steam Summer Sale this summer and they already have like two DLCs or whatever they plan on the live servicing this game. Um, I just really wish they went for more so a story driven type of game um, and, you know, and maybe focus on the gameplay, like maybe second and try and make us like, I don't know, care about the game. But yeah, save yourself some money. Do not buy Suicide Squad. Watch the watch a streamer play it. Uh, there's a reason why they're making it sponsored with everybody else in the whole world. So don't buy Suicide Squad. Um, yeah. Did you have any, uh, like, desire to play it, or did you kind of know or think it was going to be like that? Oh, absolutely not. I had absolutely no interest. And the only time I think I had genuine interest in playing it was when, like, it, the very first trailer showed up. And I was like, wait, this looks kind of fun. Like, this looks, oh, dude, Rocksteady? Like, hey, they, like, they, they cook. Yeah. And so... I had like a vague interest, but like they didn't show a whole lot. So I wasn't like super crazy into it. And a lot of my friends were like, Oh, third person shooter. I'm not sure about this, but you know, it's everyone was like, Oh, it's rock steady. Hopefully it's good. 
you know, obviously people love the Arkham games. Yeah. Uh, and so, and so, I, I mean, I think my interest like just immediately went out the window as soon as like the articles came out like that. It was a live service game. Same. When people start, sh- when they start showing previews and it was like very like, took a lot of looter shooter aspects a lot of the live service shit that we've really gotten shoved down our throats the past like three years or so and i mean don't get me wrong like a fun live service game i i'll sink my teeth into but i was like we've already tried this live service thing with a different superhero title uh what superhero title was that (laughs) avengers oh i never played that that was that was another one that was another disastrous superhero live service title and i was like i was like i just don't think like um like a multi budget like a multi million dollar budget live service superhero title works in this day and age um especially if the loot for a superhero game is like guns you know what yeah, I mean? It, it's like it, what? It's like it felt really flat. You know, it felt like you know when you get a gun, you should be like, "Whoa, this thing is kind of cool." And it like you you compare the guns, and it's just that. And like I just feel like they throw these big numbers at you while you're shooting things to kind of distract you on like what you're playing. Uh, it's like you said, it's just not what a superhero game should be based on. Like I think with superhero movies, it should be story focused. Um, and you know, obviously the gameplay needs to be fun and stuff. Um, uh, but I really feel like superheroes really, and games especially, uh, really peak when the story is the focus, in my opinion. It's just strange because it's just strange because like, you know, like you had this studio rock steady who made Arkham and, a combat system that dude everyone copied hard for like the past 10 years and you're saying like the the arkham games yeah the arkham games have ripped that off formula. that that the, the the arkham combat system and it was so well i say that because like you're like oh well obviously the game has to be fun but it was like dude arkham literally made a combat system that was so fun and so perfect for a batman game and a brawler in general and then like you know like it was the perfect like wow the story's dope and then holy shit like this is this is what i wanted this is how i want to beat down type of game from batman and then like it just and then it's it just goes from like that like that that influence from this company to yeah a third person shooter and yeah you have characters with cool little abilities and and movement but like it really just boils down to how do we sell a live service game uh we need loot uh yeah you you customize your guns it's like man what like i don't know i just it's it's whatever it's it's ultimately like the reality of like the current the current ecosystem of games are in where like it's it's yeah people yeah the devs want to make a good game but like ultimately it's about like okay we're this is a triple a company we need to it's not just about making a good game it's how does this good game make us money type yeah and so um yeah i don't know it's it's just funny because like the dichotomy of like a game like pal world that just came out which is also you know essentially a live service game yeah um but the but the it's it's like the the direction of it is like oh when you're done you're done uh Mm -hmm. come back later when we have more content you know what i mean like and versus like rock steady which is like hey guys here's all these cool little carrots on a stick please play the game please play the game and it's like i don't know it's just weird cuz the the uh, the the creative direction of so many of these companies is how do we keep people on the game versus like a game Making like Power World game. which is like oh dude we have something really special here uh like let's make let's make these next like 100 hours they spend on a fucking banger and then people really love it and really vibe with it and suddenly and now Power World comes out and Power World's like a paid DLC I'm like um 
I'm there, baby. Like I am there for Power and you World. Know what? I, and like Power World merchandise as well. Like if I get some I'm Power in. World like I'm plushies in. or like yeah, I'm in. Like I'm there. It's just um, time and time again you're seeing this happen where like a dev just comes out with like a really quality game that really speaks to people uh not just from like a you know emotional standpoint but from like a gamer brain standpoint of just like dude this is like a genuinely fun genuinely good game it scratches all these itches that i've been wanting from a game like you like baldur's gate right people were like dude i did not realize like rpgs could be this deep like this is really this has really spoken to me in a way I've never been spoken to when it comes to an RPG game. Uh, before that, Elden Ring, right? Everyone was like, holy shit. Like, I'm not a Souls fan, but like having this this open world dense game, just this incredible game to get lost in, like amazing. Um, and then this year you have Pal World where it's just like, oh, all right, yeah, Pokemon ripoff be damned. Like there's some genuinely good gameplay in here and I'm 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 building with my pals i'm fighting with my pals we're going to beat up a bunch of bosses like this is really fun and all it's, it happens time and time again where the world gets taken by storm by a genuinely really fun game and then that dev becomes so successful because of it obviously like larian and and fromsoft don't need that success like they already were successful game like you know companies but like you know, like Power World, it's like this is this is a new company that has just successfully made like a new IP that people are going to like engage with all the time, and and you see indie games do it too. Like people, the indie games take the world by storm, and still, over and over again, CEOs are like, man, like that's a pretty successful game. How do we do nothing from that? And may and take only the live service parts of it and try to inject it into this game that our devs yeah. are working on right now. Uh, so what what's like your like stance? Because th- I bought this game for a hundred dollars. Okay. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and I think a big reason why that game was a hundred dollars is because you get early access for three days. I'm really starting to fucking hate the idea of let's make our game cost thirty dollars more for people that really really want to play it and want to play this game early. I hate uh, that. I, I don't know it. where that trend started, uh, but like, what's your opinion on that trend? Well, I, I hate it. I, I think, um, I think like the play seven days early, stupid. I think it's a dumb way to like inflate the cost of the game because, like, what did Without you get for that extra really thirty anything bucks? Different. What'd you get for the extra three bucks? Probably like a couple like guns. Yeah, we skins, get like right? every every like uh hero you play got a skin but it didn't really matter that they got a skin because you only really play one person yeah now, you exactly. can put the bots in those costumes that you got but i don't know i just thought it was so uh, weird. Uh. see like that it's like oh here's a couple of skins for 30 extra bucks but really you're paying for early access yeah and i don't know i think it's a dumb way to inflate the cost of the game so they get a little extra bucks from people who are really excited from it and yeah it's like fronting the bill to them because it's like, you're really excited. Um, you know, we need to make a little extra money off of this. And I mean, obviously it works because it, like mm-hmm. people pay for it and, and they probably make like, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty decent amount of money. Enough off for them to really offer excited. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and like they offer it cause they need it. Right. Like, and so, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really a fan of it. I don't think anyone's yeah. really a fan of it, to be honest. It's just kind of goofy. And, um, I don't know. Like, I understand. Uh, like, before it was, like, pre-ordering. I get pre-ordering. Like, ooh, yeah. you, you were really interested. Oh, you pre-ordered the game? Oh, dude, like, early access. But now it's, like, it's not, you don't even pre-order. Now it's just, like, pay 30 extra bucks. You get an extra week. Yeah. Uh, that time that. of pre-ordering is like so gone like i can't even remember the last time i technically like pre-ordered a game oh dude now that i think i don't i have not it's been so long since i've pre-ordered a game i think the last time years. i pre-ordered a game was when i was when i bought scarlet and violet like like a couple of days See, early nintendo games kind of make sense because you never really know with nintendo games especially when they're physical 
like if you want a physical one. Um, but I think yeah, like I mean the, the Switch last is time I the Switch is game, like the last bastion of like physical games for me for sure. I really think like Overwatch, but then again, like I I remember going to GameStop and picking it up. I don't remember like why I did that. But I remember going to GameStop for some reason with Overwatch, even though I could just bought it online. But I think that's the last like thing I ever bought from like a pre-order. Um, pre-order. But yeah, Suicide Squad, yeah. once again, falling into that trap that I think a lot of games find themselves in. Uh, How do we make which money? is How do we make money off yeah the exactly they just it's not even more so like let's make a good game it's uh people have been wanting this type of thing uh let's make it and try and squeeze every dollar out of superhero fans uh speaking of fans uh, i don't know how to move that into the th- uh, playstation show i'm a we fan had a, of playstation ah see that was pretty good uh, we ah. had a playstation showcase uh of uh the january 2024 state of play uh had a 40 games or 40 minutes and 15 games uh coming to playstation consoles with also some updates on um some games that are a thing now uh we got some things from hell divers too i think uh, i remember uh, you saying you're excited I, about hell divers I, I do want to play that game i i that game just looks really fun to me yeah, launches uh, February eighth. We had uh, a game called Stellar Blade uh, that was uh, shown. Now, and I know a lot of my friends are really excited about this game, and I'm really excited too because it just looks really fun. It just like whew, something about like the Devil May Cry fan in me just like really vibes with this type of game. Uh, something I know one of our boys was crying about. We got uh, Sonic Shadow Generations. Oh, and okay. See, this is like, um, this is one of those games that genuinely, like, when they sh- when they showed it as like a re-release or like a remaster, everyone was like, "Oh, cool," but then like it, it looks like it's gonna be like a whole new, a whole new story, a whole new, obviously, shadows, a whole new playable character. Uh, so this seems like a really big, big, juicy, uh big expansion for the generations game that people had before so well yeah he was losing yeah sonic was losing his shit he was he was he was creaming it's obviously a it's coming out in uh the fall 2024 and just today blue i don't know if you saw it we got our first teaser of uh sonic the hedgehog 3 um which yeah which teases a little bit of uh shadow in it um, oh, and apparently, it's Shadow of the Hedgehog. It's year of the sh- it's year of the Shadow of the Hedgehog. Exactly. So a pre- uh, apparently Hayden Christensen is uh, voice. No Shadow. fucking way. That is what that uh, is the rumors so are. Sick. Yeah. So apparently Hayden Christensen will be voicing Shadow. Is the rumors That's going awesome. around? And the movie comes out sometime in December. So Sh- Sonic Shadow Generation seems like the perfect kind of like oh great timing l- little great little tease into the movie. Now it's a big movie cinema. And I haven't seen any of the Sonic movies. I don't don't ask really? me why. I'm a big Sonic fan too. Uh, just haven't seen them. But I think I'm gonna do some sort of like Sonic marathon. Uh, they're just fun. Like they're just fun. They're like they're like that's in what the- I hear. It's like the same, uh, it gives you like Fast and Furious vibes. Like, I wouldn't say they're as brain dead as Fast and Furious, but they're like just fun. Like, they're just like yeah. a nice homage to the to the games. And like, it just it doesn't take itself seriously. And that's Almost what makes it like so the fun. Super Mario movie, probably. Like, it was uh, fun. I was, oh. yeah, in the same vein. It's in the same vein. It's just, it's just fun. It's just goofy. And it's just like, it makes your, you know, it makes your heart feel happy. And that's what I like. Uh, it doesn't got, disrespect and- the characters. And that's the best part. We got Hoyo versus next free to play MMO adventure, uh, Senless Zone uh, Zero. Uh, I mean, ha, huh, that's so great. Hoyo versus Genshin Impact, right? Yeah, uh, Genshin Impact and Star Rail. I know a lot of people love, like, love Star Rail to death, so I can't be too mad, but I'm just like, I see Hoyo versus, I'm just like, skip. Uh, we got a game called Foam Stars. It's the next game from Square Enix. It's a multiplayer shooter that focuses on building structures with foam. Uh, the trailer showed new gameplay and characters as well as game. Uh, it comes out on PlayStation Plus on the 6th. So it's coming sooner rather than later. 
Uh, that one looked kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, something that I'm really interested in, um, because I'm going to say, uh, real quick, I'm going to take a little tangent here. I saw Godzilla minus one minus color. Okay. You creamy Which is, pants? bro, I'm t- it's my favorite movie of, uh, ever, it, it, but the minus color version. I, I don't, I didn't think the minus color. Did yeah, the music bro, sound better I, at the, with the, without color too? It's crazy, bro. I literally sound like shark, like saying like dub music or sub music sounds better than the dub music on an anime. I'm not joking when I say, like, this movie is meant to be in black and white. It was in fucking credible. It is, if you have a Godzilla minus one minus color showing and you saw, like, it in color, do yourself a favor and just go see it again in black and white. It is unbelievable. That movie is my favorite movie ever. I loved it. And uh, Sydney and I went to go see it. Sydney was crying, so you know it even can touch the normies out there that don't watch many Godzillas. Did, was uh, that her it, first time seeing uh, minus one, or? Yeah, she had not seen minus one in color. Oh, so it, dude! And she walked out of yeah. it going like, "I don't even want to see it like in color." Like that was like an I was incredible, and I was like, "Yeah, it was. It's it's a beautiful movie." Uh, and that brings us into Dave the Diver X Godzilla. Um, I, I don't know what Dave the Diver is. Uh, it looks like a game where you go and, you know, dive for things. Um, it, it's fun. A lot of people really enjoyed it. Um, I watched, uh, I, I watched Char play it a lot. It seemed genuinely really fun. Um, it's, um, uh, how do I even describe it? It's, it's its own unique, it's got its own unique spin on, on, uh, on a, I guess, um, God, I can't even, it's kind of an RPG. It's kind of a simulation of like diving. It's just a fun little game. Um, okay. uh, very super, super immersive, yeah. you know, just a good underwater adventure style, you know, type game. Um, it like, it has a lot of really cool parts about it. Like, it's kind of like, you got a lot of collecting, I th- I saw it kind of it kind of gives me the vibe of like a of like a like one of those like diner game like a like a diner dash game to okay it, it's just a really really cool game with a lot of really cool parts to it I <laughs> the Godzilla part I was like whoa <laughs> I was like where is this coming from I was yeah. shocked that factors delicious ready to eat meals make eating every day better. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitianary approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie plus, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help you make your weekly meals and planning even more fun and delicious. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and feel good every week with meals ready to go. Two minute meals. That's my favorite part about this. Factor meals only take two minutes. They're quick and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash GG50 and use code GG50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active. That's code GG50 at factormeals.com slash GG50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. Right now, Mint Mobile has wireless plans just starting at 15 bucks a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for 15 bucks a month. I could be saving over $100 by switching to Mint Mobile with the plans that they showed me. All plans come with unlimited talk and text. High-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Choose from 3, 6, or 12-month plans and say goodbye to your monthly phone bill. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gg. That's mintmobile.com slash gg. So cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gg. Additional taxes, fees, restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Ever try to break a bad habit and felt like you're climbing Mount Everest in flip-flops? Yeah, I've been there too. But here's a breath of fresh air. Fume. It's not about giving up. It's about switching it all up. 
Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. You guys know I've been quitting my vape for whenever I get that urge, I just grab my fume, put in the orange uh, flavor, and just puff away. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. Again, for me, it's all about the flavor. The orange flavor is by far the best. Start the year off right with a good habit by going to tryfume.com slash gg and get the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners to our show 10% off. They use our code at gg to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Again, that's tryfume.com slash gg. Definitely interesting. I don't know. I don't know how that game works and how Godzilla is going to work around it, but I might try it out just to hang out with Godzilla. Uh, next, we had a game called V Rising. Uh, had a little bit of a update. Uh, it's an isometric survival RPG from Stunlock, um, and it's coming sometime in 2024. I don't know much about it. I don't know much about it either. I hear so much about V Rising, but uh, I've I've never actually played it. Now, here's something I think a lot of horror fans were waiting for. Woo! This came out of nowhere. Uh, Silent Hill, the short, the short message. In another surprising reveal, Konami announced Silent Hill, the short message, a first-person survival uh, horror game set in the Silent Hill universe. It follows a girl named Maya uh, who just travels through a dark house in search of something, all while being stalked by monstrous entities. Uh, looks really sick. Um, I love the Silent Hill fr- franchise lately. Um, I mean, like I said, uh, obviously Kojima is not involved with it, but PT is still one of the most fun things I've done. Um, I was gonna and, say, I, I think this is cool, but ballsy of them to release this, yeah, uh, right. after Kojima, after they canned Kojima Silent Hill, yeah. But I think Silent Hill fans have literally just waited so long for something like I don't fucking care, Konami, just yeah, they just need crumbs. Mm, thank you like uh, I, I get it i get it and not only did silent hill fans get to eat with that they also get a silent hill 2 remake um kunami uh gave a first glimpse at the gameplay uh james sunderland fighting enemies and exploring uh, familiar locations in the game uh no release date was given though uh the trailer ended with a vague now in development message so it might have some elders uh Elder Scrolls uh, type beat to it or Fable. Um, I don't know if that Fable game ever came out that was in development. Uh, Next, we had a game called Judas. Um, I think this is the game Christian was really excited about because I think somebody was making it that he was really excited about. Um, It's from Ghost Story Studios and Ken Levine. Um, the trailer showed off Mayflower and a city adrift in space where everyone spies on everyone else. Uh, yeah, this was, this was, um, uh, this was really exciting cause it's the, the guy behind Bioshock. That's it. Well, the student, the, the people, the people who made Bioshock. I remember Christian like bringing this up like a year and a half ago or something. Uh, no release date was announced for Judas, only a now in development. Why, why, why? Like, just don't even show me it if it's going to end in now in development. You know what I mean? Well, I think, I think for them, it's like, it's, it's, it's like a studio that's like trying to like, you know, I think when like you're a studio that's like really making like this title, that's going to put you on the map. They kind of have to like, you know, show things as it comes. Cause they want people to be like, Oh wow. Like I believe in this studio. Uh, and also like investment, like people, like you gotta be showing off like what you have. So, you know, people can invest in it. So. I get it. I, th- I, got, I think it's. I think it's a vibe. We got Metro Awakening VR. VR, you know. Uh, I know. I think I played Metro for a little bit. I didn't get too far into it, but um, it's a God, cool game. VR VR games look so cool. Like I wish I could get into VR if it didn't cost like fucking a whole ass console to get into. Yeah, uh, Legend. Well, here's another VR game that's coming out. Uh, Legendary Tales uh, is a first person medieval fantasy game. Uh, the gameplay trailer show their hero wielding swords, axes, magic, and more against skeletons and other monsters. Uh, comes out uh, next week, February 8th. Uh, we got uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, not really sure. It's a Capcom open world fantasy RPG. Um, warrior. We see a warrior battling a dragon while riding on its head, uh, which is always kind of cool. Uh, comes out in March. 
I know a lot of people loved uh, Dragon Dogma One. Uh, I believe, <laughs> I believe a lot of people said the best seven out of ten, seven out of ten game I ever played. <laughs> and so I really hope two is the best average the best game I've ever played. Is the best eight out of ten game we've ever played. Uh, then we got Rise of the Ronin. Uh, which looks so sick. Yeah, this trailer focused on three elements: combat with multiple action scenes uh, featuring our hero intense hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, which also gave us a glimpse at the game's world um, and choice as the game's story will give player choices that will affect the world around them. Uh, and then this, this was something that I was really surprised about. Like I felt no one was really asking for this, but once I heard that movies were coming out of it, it made a little bit more sense. Um, Until Dawn is getting a PS5 and PC remake. Such uh, for a the weird... Yeah, Relief. I thought the same thing. It was funny because I was watching it and everyone's like, this looks like Until Dawn. And then they were like, I think it I think it actually is Until Dawn. And then I was like, why? I mean, Until Dawn, great game. I, I know a lot of people love Until Dawn. Uh, Bro, but Until Dawn like, came out in 20, 2014. Yeah, it's it's been almost 10 years. We're getting old, Rob. That came out in 2014. That That's came out crazy. The same year that as blew Destiny. my mind. Came out the same year as Destiny. That's Wild. crazy. Wild, but yeah, <laughs> I, that came out of nowhere. Uh, I, 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 I think a lot of people were excited about it, but I just didn't really expect that. And I think for me, I didn't expect it not because it's not asked for, but because I think for me, the passage of time is like is beyond me and so i was like isn't this way too soon to be releasing this and then i had the same response as you i was like holy shit it came out in 2014 yeah and like i don't know there's like other until dawn games you can play that are like not necessarily better but the exact same thing you know what i mean i just i very nah, interesting nah it's you not liked until dawn. dawn a lot i i it's not it's I, I like Until Dawn, but I think Until Dawn hit like a uh, hit a stride that we have not gotten from like these story based, you know, these like basically like interactive uh, choice based films uh, since Until Dawn, to be honest. Um, and then the last game uh, we got was Death Stranding 2 on the beach. Did you ever play the first one, Blue? I, I briefly played Death Stranding and I quickly realized it wasn't for me. I quickly realized this was kind of like an, a Kojima art project and I appreciated it, but it was um, it was a very specific gameplay that I just knew I wasn't going to be able to sink my teeth into. And if I wanted like, a, you know, like a traveling delivery simulator, I could just play Final Fantasy 14. Haha. <laughs> so, yeah, it was cool. Uh, and and it was more it was more one of those games like i could live vicariously through other people playing it and showing off their gameplay uh yeah. and so that's what i did but yeah just uh I, I just have no desire but this game looks to be a little bit of a departure from and from a little bit it kind of seems like a fairly large departure from death stranding's gameplay I can only assume from the cutscenes we've seen because it starts getting into like the 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 first Death Stranding was like very like grim, dark, serious, and it had goofy moments. But this one kind of like is getting into like like that goofy Kojima shit. He has like a puppet that, or something. The goofy action fantasy shit that Kojima loves. So I don't even fully know what type of game Death Stranding Two is, um, but if it is a little more action based, because that dude starts shredding on the guitar, shooting lighting, and I was like, "Holy fucking shit, Kojima, my god!" And he's then done it again. He's he. What can I say? Kojima, Kojima has done it again. And then he just starts like sliding on the ground, like ripping ass. And then like they trans, they fucking mecha transform into these like fucking full Evangelion into these like big mechs. And I was like, "Oh my, f Kojima, we've done it. Again. How yeah? How does he keep cooking?" How does Kojima keep cooking, baby? Now and Kojima made Metal Gear, right? Yes, sir. Okay. He is the he is the master of Metal Gear, and the he's just the he's the goat. He's the fucking he's the goat. 
Well, like, Blue, I fucking love Kojima. You'll be excited because after the Death Stranding 2 uh, trailer, uh, Hito oh, Kojima appeared oh, on yeah. the broadcast oh, to announce yeah. that his next project for Sony after Death Stranding 2 will be a new IP and return to espionage action. Okay, dude. So everyone was so busy being like, damn, what the fuck was that Death Stranding 2 trailer? And, and everyone was like, Ugh. I think a lot of people were a little over the, the Kojima fellatio after the the jeff uh at the game awards and so everyone's like oh dude uh, like uh, we gotta we gotta jerk off kojima for another 15 minutes and i'm over here like are you guys are you guys lame as shit or something are you guys just are you, are you goofy asses rizless g- no giat in hand like True. you like this dude just announced he's making another tactical ass a- espionage action game the, like literally the guy who made Metal Gear Solid. Like we're gonna get we're gonna get probably a fucking banger stealth title from Kojima again, finally. And you guys are over here like, oh, jerk it off, Kojima. Like, shut up and listen to the goat. I I'm think that's so like ready. For my an biggest SBNR video title. game sin of all time. I have never played a Hito Kojima. And game, I wouldn't ever, say that's a sin ever. because he has a very specific type of game. It's like a, it's like one of those like if you if you know you know. Like if you played it, you know, and that's why he has such a ridiculous cult following because Kojima just embodies like the seriousness and tone of and and political uh, political way of hitting the mark on games in a way a, a, a Japanese developer can like they get like really existential with it and but at the same time like not being afraid to be goofy not being afraid to like have moments where it doesn't take itself too seriously and just have some crazy shit yeah and so like kojima just embodies that embodies that just the oh he's just he's just he's just he's the goat i'm so excited i i Uh, didn't love his i didn't love death stranding as an art project I Death Stranding 2 hopefully is a little bit you know a little more a, a little more uh fine tuning of what he won from that but I heard espionage game from Kojima and I was like baby I, mean, I am fucking ready I am ready for another blur the line between film and game because Metal Gear Solid 4 is like top three game of all time for me and that game is that game back then was was what was like really blurring the line of film and game and it came out so long ago and so to see kojima hopefully trying something like that again in this current day and age would be really sick and i'm really excited and yeah i'm i'm a kojima fanboy so for all those people listening to this and being like man blue like he's doing tricks on the glizzy fuck yeah i am baby watch this yeah hop on is johnson um, hopping on it uh and that was uh the state of play um a lot of cool things coming um and yeah uh is there anything else blue you wanted to touch on before we uh, moved on to q and I don't think so um I I think um for the most part this this week was a whole lot of state of play um I will say I did want to talk about Nintendo oh actually making a statement on Pal World they made another one no, the original. Did we cover that last week? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we talked about that and about Damn. how they are monitoring if anything is in. Oh, we on. did. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't yeah. know. I just still think that's so crazy. I guess we talk about it. I, I mean, I, I didn't. I forgot we talked about it, but damn shit. Um, but, uh, okay, wait. We did hit level fifty in Power World. I guess we can kind of wrap up our uh, thoughts on Power World. Um, I, I just hit fifty. You've been hitting fifty. Banger. Uh, yeah and like i said i still hit 50 and i still like have things like that i want to do like it sounds kind of dumb but like i want my six party of pals to be like perfect like all of them uh yeah i get that uh, so, i so i'm breathing like crazy right now i'm i'm definitely like at my end game uh which is to say i mean power right now doesn't really have an end game it's mostly just like go around what you make of it like kind of yeah it, it's definitely like a what you make of it kind of game in the end game so like i'm de- i'm also in the same boat like i want to have six beaters i want to have lots of resources i want to have like the best team i can for whenever the next update comes out because you know they talked about raids and stuff and so i'm going around i'm beating up the bosses uh i'm 
honestly a- AFKing in my base while my eggs hatch and I, you know, get some resources. So uh not the most engaging end game, but like I but I mean they know that. Like they, you know, it's an early access title and like for me it was like the first hundred hours I spent on the game was fucking incredible. And yeah, it's slowing down now. And I'm at the point where like, you know, I'm uh, like, it's not that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's more so that like I came out of the tunnel and now I'm just like, I got to, I'm kind of still going down the road, even though there was, you know, it's kind of, and maybe it's a dirt road, you know, there's not a whole lot of, it's not quite paved. uh, It's not quite, not quite, you know, it's a little messy. It's a little, Mm -hmm. little goofy, if you will. And, but like, I'm still having a good time with it. I, I honestly leave it right now. I'm leaving it like, overnight for my ore base to farm i i'm like whenever i'm playing like 14 or something uh i'm like i have it like minimized in like a tiny little screen lowest settings 30 fps i was gonna say on my other monitor no 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 not my poor dude this game this game takes like no resources when it's like lowest settings 30 fps a tiny window like it's it's on but you do have an issue with the servers you were having a uh that bridezilla my, moment yesterday my so this game would probably be like um right this is like an eight out of ten game for me right like i i think this is a genuinely good game I, I i think the biggest thing for me and i might try playing it in like my own solo worlds to get an experience because mm-hmm. i know a lot of people don't have this issue it's just like the server lag is ridiculous um, it does take go, you out of this some moments sometimes I went to go like try on like a like an official server and it's like it's really not that much different like yeah the the things are slightly more responsive but like I still get like that lag when I ever dodge roll uh, I still get caught on like invisible walls because of the server lag like yeah. when I get caught in an attack sometimes like if I dodge it's like the server's like no you didn't uh you're stuck in this enti- you're going to sit through this entire move because you got stuck in it because of the server lag um you know bosses get goofy t- things take a long time to load in um i, I just started gaslighting myself and thinking oh it's our server but like the reality is this game is just not you know this game just has a lot of server issues and has a lot of multiplayer problems when it comes to the online aspect uh when you're playing on a server and so my biggest gripe like the pathing issues is whatever like yeah that'll be fixed like, it's kind of goofy but like there's ways to avoid it my biggest gripe is the server pro like the multiplayer this is a game yeah. that's definitely designed to be played with people for sure and designed to be played with many people um and obviously you could play it solo and in a co-op world and get the same experience but there's definitely something special about it there's something special about it in its own way of playing it with like a bunch of your homies like with a community of people and it's its own different unique experience and that experience is kind of bogged down by how bad this game runs on servers so still a great game but i really hope that in the future they and the near future they really which they've already said they're working like they know it's not amazing uh on servers so but that's my that's my biggest thing you know, I hope when raids, I hope before raids come out, they have like a really big patch that really says like, hey, we want to, we want to get, we want there to be like a level of parity between like you playing a single or co-op world and uh, like the experience uh, from that to a server to like, you know, a big online uh, version of this game. So that's, that's all I had. I just wish this is a great eight out of 10 game. And I really wish the servers were better. Cause then if like the servers were gas, you know what? Dare I say, dare I say nine out of 10. Yeah, so. bro. This would be, this would be like a nine out of half out of 10 for me. I've, I've been loving it. It's probably my favorite survival game. I think I've ever played. It's gas. Um, it, it's, gas. It, it's, it's so much fun, especially like when like you're playing with friends, man, and you can just like vibe out in a discord and just chill out. Like, you don't oh, have yeah. to be talking the entire time, but it's like, Hey, do you guys want to go and try to catch the jet dragon again? Like, I just need some help. Yeah, sure. Like, whatever. Hey, and, you um, know, maybe you drop a couple of carb bombs on your homies while they're streaming. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, again, play it if you haven't. Find time. Uh, we'll move on to Q and A now. 
Uh, we have a question here from Unknown Source. Uh, it says, where is the best place for a chance to directly interact with you guys? For example, talking on Twitch or for a hopeful gamer, getting to play with you guys during some games and such. Uh, for me, uh, the best time to do it uh, is while I'm streaming. Um, I'm always reading chat. That's literally why I stream is my favorite part of streaming is the interaction I get with chat. Um, that is why I stream. I, I live for interaction. I live for like communication back and forth with whatever. Um, so if you just type in my chat, be active, be a cool person. Um, I'm also active in my private discord. I'm active in the GG over easy discord. If you tag me in there, I'm normally always trying to talk back with as many people as I can. Uh, yeah. What about you, Blue? Uh, best way to interact with me. If you tweet some funny shit at me on Twitter, I'll probably like it. If you, um, my streams are definitely probably the most like direct way. Um, if you, but I would, I would say the early, the quickest way is definitely the GG Easy uh, Discord. Like if someone uh, asks me on there, I'll probably see I did, that. And I'll be like, I did Yo. see you posting uh your workout review, uh, your workouts. I, I, in I'm the, trying to uh, remember to post channel. them. I'm trying to remember to post them. Yeah, I'm posting my um. I'm trying to post my day to day uh workouts that I get because like in the app that like I go to my classes in the um, you know they'll they'll lay it out for you like what we're doing today, and so I try to post them. Yeah, um, Arios also said he was working out with you, dude, and that you're a beast. So it was kind of the opposite of what you had said. You know, you did both Arios called... say that? That's, yeah, that's we were, funny. We were, I was Pelotoning before I ended the stream. It was when I did that 1 a.m. Peloton. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, Arios came in the chat. I don't know why he was up at 2 a.m. Uh, but he came in the chat and said he had been working out with you and that you really get after and that you're a beast. And I was like, hell yeah. I, I, I will say, um, I think a lot of people... Cause I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm not exactly the most in shape dude. So a lot of people are like, damn, you really give your all into it. And I'm just like, I have no choice. I, uh, <laughs> the workouts y'all give me, like, I'm just like, dear God, if I get through this, yeah, if I get through this, then I'll be okay. But yeah, I, I definitely put my, I definitely put my everything into it because honestly, part of it is also like turns into fun. Like, yeah, there's something, there's something visceral about like, just pumping at a machine that just like gets your blood flowing in a way that like it, it gets stress relief, good stress relief. So uh, like, so when it's like, yeah, this sucks, but like even in Peloton, it's like, yeah, this sucks, but damn, is it good? Yeah. When I break a sweat, bro, it's like one of the best feelings ever. Uh huh. hundred percent. Uh, feels, uh, says blue. Is there a place that cuts up half cooked quesadillas and turns them into chil chilaquiles thoughts? Okay, whoa, you just broke my brain. So it the half cuts? Yeah, so it says, Blue, there is a place that cuts up half-cooked quesadillas and turns them into chilaquiles. Thoughts. quesadillas. I can see that. Like, breakfast quesadillas, I kind of fuck with. I wouldn't be mad at that. I mean, like, so... Sounded like some so, white people shit. I'm not going to lie. No, like, no, no, no. to take it, that shit from me or something. No, no, trust me. It's... It's um, it's kind of a, that definitely gives like a Tex-Mex vibe of like um, cause my place also like you can get a chilaquiles taco, which is basically just like chilaquiles, just you know like in a big flour tortilla, and that shit slaps. So I mean, it's like the same concept in quesadilla form. I would say probably a little over the top. You're kind of starting to like, you you kind of start to mess with the sanctity of like a case of, of like the chilaquiles being you know like you gotta it has yeah. to have enough room to breathe that's that's my big rule with chilaquiles if it doesn't have enough room to breathe like you can't you can't choke out the chilaquiles so i I'm, i wouldn't be mad at trying a quesadilla version of it but i, I think taco is about as far as i'll go version of it you gotta give the give it give it time give room to breathe let's speak for uh, itself call me houdini uh it says thoughts on different types of horror movies a psychological slasher uh possession demonic what's your favorite type of uh or favorite horror movies in general god i'm not a big m scary movie guy uh i never i hate the feeling of being scared or uneasy um or like worried uh so i always think it's kind of crazy that people pay to go and feel that um but when I do watch horror movies or I have watched a horror movie, um, I'm into like really fucked up shit, like shit that is like, 
I don't know, like, damn, that really shouldn't be on a movie screen. But at the end of the day, I am seeing a horror movie. Uh, so probably something like The Hills Have Eyes or something like that. Um, something that's just really fucked up uh, and isn't afraid to, like, push uh, the boundaries on, I don't know, what you see in movies. But that's, yeah. like, the first horror movie that always comes to my mind is just The Hills Have Eyes because that movie is terrifying. Mr. Um, I'm trying to think. Sorry, my brain doesn't go very fast, lads. Um, do you like the genre of horror movies, or I do, but like I, don't... I I like horror. I don't like going into the theater for horror, and I get that too. I have to be like in the right headspace. Um. I, I guess I guess for me, my I, I think psychological is probably the one that like really speaks to me the most. Like stuff like slashers uh is okay. Like possession and demonic stuff, like that isn't really like a religious eh. type shit. Like it can be fun and and spooky, but it doesn't really like it doesn't really like spook me the way it used to when I was a kid and I was like had the fear of God in me, like in the way yeah. that like I don't now. And um, I would say psychological. I th- I think the one that like really spoke to me was like probably like Baba Duke, which was Is super that the bunny psychological. Movie? No, that's the that's the Baba Duke baby. That's the that's the that's the that's the that's the like the boogeyman. Oh, uh, but like in your head type beat. Oh, motherfucking freak! What a weirdo! That that uh, that one um that that one spoke to me on the psychological level and it it i i do like psychological horrors where like you you kind of start like questioning uh like the morality of humans you know what i mean like some real existential shit um and i don't know i I guess psychological is it i i think the one movie that like really broke my brain not in the good way was insidious when I went to go see it and I was like, I'm fucking spooked. And then they just like straight up went to this dream world and like went on a fucking dream world adventure. And I was like, man, what the fuck? Like, all right. I'm a... uh, what the fuck, man? Like, come on. Like this started off so good. One of the biggest issues with horror movies these days is like, they show too much. Like they, they try to reveal too much and, part of the great part of psychological thrillers and, and horror movies is like, there is no reveal. Like, yeah, the, the reveal is often is often like how scary reality is. You know what I mean? So that's why, that's why psychological is really stick with me. So, uh, Kara says silverback gorilla versus Clyde parentheses, the largest Kodak bear in history. I don't have a comparison for this. Uh, I mean, yeah, give me the bear. The oh, bear me, has like, at... the bear literally has like, I don't even need to see. The bear literally has like knives at the end of its paws. You know, the gorilla back, doesn't have shit. Silverback gorilla. You know, I think gorillas are overrated combat wise. I, I agree. Been... And Clyde. Oh, dude. Oh yeah, I don't my know how big god. Is. Let me see this thing. Don't worry, you guys don't need to look it up. I'll have it, you know, on the podcast holy nah clyde's shredding clyde is annihilating yeah, holy that's shit this thing is huge nah clyde clyde takes that easy i'm afraid of bears bear, i don't i don't mess with bears you know nah, I think as you as you should but like i if ah, a lot of people are like if 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 dangerous why cuddly that's exactly yeah. why. Yeah, like that's white people shit. Like cuddling with bears and stuff. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no bears. You are, won't catch this white doing that. You, you do not fuck with bears because yeah. they. That's like one of those animals that can just like on on a dime, your life's over. Yeah. And and like they like, their, their claws, their hands, their paws, their grippers. Huh, not there have you ever uh have you ever heard heard the audio of like i guess some dude in like the 80s or the 90s like loved bears and would go to like alaska and like dude. hang out with bears and like document it he made like a movie or something on it 
And then uh, there's only audio of it um, that they've released, but it's literally him and I think his wife at the time getting attacked by a grizzly bear and literally dying to the to a grizzly bear. It's insane. It's just like, it, it, yeah, bears are just terrifying, and, and people yeah. people do not people do not show enough respect to bears because so often like they're giving them food and shit, and they and it's like man if some like it takes it takes literally half a second and that bear is like swinging his paw it just takes one swing to kill you because like that's that that is not a bear is not a big chubby fuzzy cuddly that bear is a like a literal ton of muscle with sharp knives as hands it just yeah. yeah show respect to bears don't do that don't do that don't do that viral shit don't feed bears. Don't do that. Bears, bears uh, are spooky. Hyper Lethal uh, says, "What's a movie or TV show that you would love to see come out one day?" I've always thought a dark and gritty Halo ODS TV show would be cool. Well, we have news for you. This great show with uh, Pablo Schreiber, <laughs> where he shows his ass, uh, and he loves, and it's a dark and gritty Halo. I feel like because... he comes out every week and, and says something about the Halo show. I saw him say something again, and I forget what it was. Hey, he's he's getting a good check. He's he's gonna defend that show. I would defend. I would. I would. I mean, okay, I probably wouldn't shill that hard, but I mean, like when you're an actor and you put your act dusty into it, because I mean, he did kind of have like an open canvas to work on, even though that's not what they should have given him. But he did kind of have an open canvas, so he's probably like to a degree proud of the work he's done. Um, I get it. I I always say I would love to see an Assassin's Creed series done correctly. <sighs> It would work really well in a TV show format. I agree. It would be so good. I say this a lot, and I still mean it. I really, in the same vein of Assassin's Creed working, I think a Metal Gear Solid show would work super well in a TV show. That would format. be really cool. I, I think that would get me into the Metal Gear Solid like universe for sure. Yeah. Um, did you see that Final Fantasy VII, like whatever the, the next one that came out, announced how big the game is today? Did you see that? No. I don't know why I just it? thought of it. 146 gigs fucking hell it's 146 gigs uh i will be there no matter what <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'll be there no matter what uh just flash uh says do you guys have a local slash coffee chain shop that you visit often for example my favorite is uh my works coffee machine because it's free and has a uh, oh and have a great weekend everyone i'm not a big coffee Thanks, guy I, I don't drink coffee it's the least colombian thing about me i'm not i when don't drink I, coffee um, when i worked at my place my favorite coffee machine was also the uh our 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 work off like our our uh uh lunch room commune like our the... communal a communal area we had a we had a really sick like a uh, coffee machine that had like starbucks roasts and shit obviously it wasn't a starbucks machine but like it had like you know they throw like the beans in it and you get a you get a nice little starbucks roast and it was free like you get as much coffee as you wanted and it was super dope um and that was some banger coffee. I will say, um, I've kind of, I, every once in a while I do get into coffee and I do enjoy it. I think like a, like a nice, a, you know, a good Keurig and some of those, um, down here at HEB, they have like really cool, like cafe au lait, uh, with like local brews, local, local, uh, local roasts. And there's this one called Pan Dulce and it's so good. And every once in a while, I'll be into coffee. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't really we playing Power World the other way. I think that's true. I I did. I woke up really early, and I was like, I got myself a coffee. I got myself my little protein bar. Like, it's gonna be a good day. Oh my uh, god! When I was we were in Power World, I would literally wake up Power World. I barely thought about myself. I was like, I was in that <laughs> zone where I was just like, oh fuck, I should probably eat. I should probably I should probably handle that. Yeah. <sighs> But yeah, um, as far as coffee goes, I don't really buy coffee. I don't, I've never, I feel like buying coffee is always like, they put way too much sugar, way too much cream. You're you're drinking a dessert, which has its place, but I'd rather just go get ice cream or something. Uh, Crystal says, what's the most memorable dream slash nightmare that you've ever had? <sighs> uh, any, just... any any dream well i guess it's a nightmare i guess but any dream i'm ever in a plane 10 times out of 10 that plane is going fucking down 
Uh, so if I'm ever in a dream and I'm in a plane and it's crashing, uh, that's always pretty memorable. But it's always so funny. Like, I'll be in the dream, planes coming down or something. It lands, it crashes, and then I'm always kind of like, "Oh man, that was fucking crazy!" Like that was yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's... and then I'm like, I'm, I'm like in a city now or something. You know, I'm always like, "Oh god, that was fucking." Why? yeah exactly like the dream just keeps going like some yeah, crazy like, shit happens and you just go to the next arc of the story yeah very rarely do do my dreams end at the crash it's always like i'm dusting myself off and then something else is happening looney tunes ass caught like a plane crash for real and then i'll walk out of the plane crash i'll be like an accordion like wah, 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 wah. <laughs> like just that, that, those are really the only dreams that I kind of remembering. Uh, I think the only dreams that I, I mean, I actually remember all my dreams. I have really vivid dreams. Uh, so whenever I dream, I, I'm pretty, uh, it, it sticks with me pretty, pretty much all the time. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll remember it like 90% of the time. I will remember it down to the T. Um, I will say the only dreams that were like really memorable to me, and are still so memorable now when I get them is when I have these dreams, like I'm back in high school uh, and true. like, uh, like I got to find my class. Uh, I got to, Oh, I have this period. I have this period. Facts. You're right. Totally right about that. Whenever I'm somehow back in school and I'm like, fuck, I haven't been to math in three months. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm going to yes. fail math. Yes. Like, yes. I, I have, I have that where I'm like, I've been through most of the school year. And I haven't gone to these classes and I'm like, oh, I'm fuck. Fucked. And then like, I'm like, and then I'm like, well, fuck. I don't even know where these classes are at this point. Like, I don't think I've, I can't remember the last time I've been to those classes. You're so right. I'm that so is. fucked. Yeah. It's like, wait, my English six, like, wait, I haven't been to English in like four months. Like, exactly. I know where this class is. I don't even know where the fuck this shit is. And then like, I go back to like the, not even like You're this so fucking, right. this fucking AI teacher. Right. I don't know. Who, like, they're just like an amalgamation of all like my teachers. And I'm just like, Oh my God, I really don't want to go into like, Mrs. Smith's going to be like, so where have you been? And, yeah. Like, and I'm like, I'm just not going to go to class. I'm just going to fail it. Like, I'll just deal with it. And yeah. then, and then like so when I funny. wake up, I'm like, Holy fucking shit. That was the, I'm so glad I'm not in that fucking world. I like <laughs> I'll wake up and I've, like I, i'm usually not i'm terrible at waking up like i love sleeping and so i that's like whenever i have that dream i'm just like oh, reality baby <laughs> so i'm so glad to be awake uh those are those are my nightmares um halcyonics uh says what's y'all favorite way to eat eggs i'm a simple sunny side up but i always like over easy um i also like over easy uh, over easy is my favorite i don't like sunny side up because you don't cook the other side of the egg and that like is weird i don't like that as far as like my own like my own cooking eggs um i'm definitely probably it's definitely poached or scrambled uh there's no in between if what is I'm, poached again poached is like um like you swirl it in like boiling water and it like it like makes like this perfect little this perfect little you know like ball of of cooked egg oh a little bit runny but like the whites are perfectly cooked and okay. whenever i make ramen I'll, I'll poach the egg in the ramen and it comes out really nice i love poached eggs it's like a it's just cooked egg whites with like the egg little run the yolk a little runny in the center it's mm. um starkin uh says what's your fa uh what are your guys' thoughts on ttt uh is it something you think will be brought back or did it get too repetitive well i don't i don't know um we kind of got to the point where i was like what more can we do with it but yeah. i think Dado is looking into um setting up ttt2 which i believe is like trouble in terrorist town on a newer version of gary's mod it's not like on like the cs 1.6 build if you will um I'm not really sure how deep that goes, but I know Dado talked about it a little bit. Um, we did do a um, we did do a recording of it. I, I assume Christian recorded it, um, but we streamed it too for about three to four hours, and it was a lot of fun. 
So you may see it come back sooner rather than later. It just all depends if Christian decides to upload it while this power world is hot, hot, hot. Uh, I really like TTT. I think for me, like if there's too many people, I just don't really go in. It's true. That is true. I think if there's uh, if there's too many people, it loses luster for me. So it definitely does. Um, and I think we all, I think half the people like open comms, half the people like it in a Discord. Um, and it it, it kind of goes all over the place sometimes. Um, I do know after a TTT such so that I just need to go lay down in a dark room afterwards. Uh, Stedrin with the last question, uh, says there have been more and more video games getting TV series. Some good, some not so good. Is there any game you'd like to see get a TV series or a movie made about? Yeah. Assassin's Creed. Mel, you're solid. <laughs> if, I didn't, if I didn't pick those, I'd probably also yeah. like to see a Bioshock one. I think Bioshock Ooh, would do Bioshock. pretty well. Bioshock would be gas. Because like Bioshock is one of those like games where I never played it, but I love the lore and just how the game kind of looks um and have always been interested in that world um just never dove into it because i was too busy playing halo at the time um trying to think if there's anything else kind of going through my game library here um yeah unfortunately probably just that a half-life series would be pretty cool um it'd be pretty interesting to see how they pulled that off uh, but yeah, uh, that'll do it for the GG over easy podcast. Uh, appreciate you blue. Uh, next week may look a little bit different. Um, I had some overlays made. Um, so it's going to be sick. Say, say goodbye, uh, to what we have here. Say goodbye to the old logo as well. Um, if you guys are curious about what is coming, uh, please join the GG over easy Patreon. Uh, it is in the description below. Uh, we will catch you guys all next week. Uh, for some more GG over easy. Peace out. Peace out.